That's tornado right there, baby. Well, which way is it going? That way. It ain't moving right now. Yeah. It's going basically going west. Moving east. Moving east. Is that thing on the side? I thought she was going to drop out of there. Well, our sirens work anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna take this back to Little Rock with me. Look at how big that sucker is. It'll grow. It'll grow. It's gonna grow. She's growing. Watch her so she don't back down on us here. I know it. That's what I'm hoping to tell them. Watch her don't flip back this way on us. Oh, there it is. I know. That's it. Maybe we'll stay up. We gotta get out of here, y'all. I ain't kidding. Funny looking. I'd be going to miss the house here, but then the little one's spawning off of it, you see there. Uh huh. Yeah, but see how it's so calm?
complex nature of tornadoes and the complex nature of human beings combine to create a magnificent puzzle, some parts of which may be unsolvable. As we are seeing, people's perceptions and reactions to a tornado vary a great deal. Some react to a tornado with great caution. It's going down, ain't it? Let's go, let's go, inside, inside, downstairs. Where's that at? There it goes, inside, downstairs. Ramey it is no, south of us, and it's moving east, okay? Where's that at, Dad? But it's really scaring me. Ooh. Nick, hold the back? door, because I'm not going to... It is breaking oh. up. No, it's not. Hell, that should be the first place. Mm -hmm. I called him. Who's now? Let's go. Oh, that hit us. It's, n it's moving to... Oops. Ah. Ah. We're it's getting this. closer! Where's that at, Dad? I don't know. Okay, yeah. Mom, is it getting close? Yes, it is, James. Well, downstairs. It won't hit our house. You better get in the house. Just the other side of Dean, I'd say. Better call Dean. Well, I no, told him no. to watch it. It's too late now. This way. Ooh, look at the stuff range. below. Oh, my word. Come on. Let's get down. Others are more cavalier in the face of the most violent windstorm on the planet. Y'all tell me when it gets real close now. Okay, when it gets that sprinkler, I'm going to hit this ass, too. Man, it's getting wider. Grab that door. We better go for the bank. Yeah. That's fixing to be here. It's fixing to be right on top of us. Yeah, get in the basement. Yeah, y'all can come. Yeah, it's fixing the tape. It's breaking with it. Jimmy, there you go. Ronnie, come on, y'all. Well, Steve, y'all come on. Well, go on, Dina. We're all right. We're full-grown adults. Y'all don't mind it, y'all. Is it taping now? Yeah. Come on, please, go on. Y'all scare me. I was going to get that sprinkler back there. It's on it right now. Let me slip up first so I record it. Let me step outside just a minute. Look, there's two more over here. Thanks, sure is. Golly. They won't be there for long. Some people 
chase tornadoes as part of a career. In Tulsa, unbelievable, that would be a funnel. Holy cow, oh my gosh, there she is. That's a funnel in the middle of that. God. Start talking again, where it's time 641. What the hell is this? We're not gonna be able to uh, beat it. Outflow, up. Outflow. Okay, at 642, 157.8, we have outflow including cardboard boxes. We're gonna have to pull over and watch it. Oh my gosh. What? Um, this is Mesocyclone City. Look at this thing. Do we dare get east of it? Look at all that dust. Let's just... Uh, Brent, do you yeah. mind if we stay behind this? Look at that. Hey, I see it. This is here, right, Jeff? What? We're in a good spot? Yes. Yeah. Good spot. It's gonna pass the road, right? Yeah. Right the road. Yeah, hit that. Hit that. Zoom in on the bottom side, front leading edge and, and the block to the side. Was it about an F1 or two? There's the cone again. I'll lose the ground picking up off the, lose the dust picking up off the ground. Going. Okay, right down the road, right there is Laverne. Oh, it's too big. It's real big. Laverne. Yeah. It's really big. Tell them it's almost stationary. Tell them it's almost stationary. Tornado's almost stationary. It's moving northeast at about 10. It's moving northeast at about 10. Yeah, it's getting very large. Move the back edge coming around. Man, Laverne is going to get nailed. Laverne, tell us going right in the city of Laverne. Laverne needs to take cover. Not too close, not too close. Okay, no problem. You just hang in here with me, okay? Don't hang up the phone on me. Laverne is gonna get nailed. Laverne's gonna get hit. Warn Laverne. Tell those people to get down. This is big time. I need backup on this one. This is unbelievable. Okay, don't lose me. Whatever you do, this is on the ground. Tearing the place up. Yeah. I have a uh, half mile wide tornado on the ground heading toward the Laverne area. Uh, it started at the intersections of Highway 3 and 283 
and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It is moving to the north northeast, picking up more debris. It now looks to be anywhere from uh, a little bit over a quarter of a mile to maybe a half mile wide. It is heading toward the town of Laverne. Uh, warn people in that area to please take cover. I see lights up ahead of me. It is heading toward those lights. So please tell those people to take cover. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's cross. I, I, I can't. It's now crossing Highway 3. I have police cars whizzing by me now toward the area. It's crossing Highway 3 right now. The lights went out uh, out in most of this area out here. There is uh, There are people trying to run from the storm. It is now crossing Highway 3. I am directly to the back of it, about an eighth of a mile behind it. It looks to be about a half a mile wide now. And uh, I've got two police cars with lights rolling who just went whizzing by me and rolling in front of me. It is now moving off to the northeast, crossing Highway 3, moving to the northeast now. It is just about all the way across the highway. So we are following that storm now to see what damage it has wrought. Others chase tornadoes as part of a hobby. Vortex tornadic situation here. Rod rotation. I think it's getting closer to us, but I don't think we're in any danger yet. Not yet. We got the engine running, ready to turn around. This town is in imminent danger. Of. Thank goodness we got the sirens going. Man, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, this is awesome. Another funnel. Okay, I'm going to switch over here slowly. Keep it on this. Another tornado right there. We will come back to it later. Oh man, I want to get pictures, Mike. He's driving straight into it. He's going to get hit. Listen, you can hear the tor the roar. Oh, there's no one in the tractor. You can hear the roar. Okay, we're zoomed out. Wow. Look at that whole tube. Classic land spout. I still got the tape rolling. Mileage, 820.7. Moved a little west. Can I get out? Uh, I wouldn't. Look at that thing. Wow, that thing is tough. There is a farmer in that tractor. He's moving. It's getting out of the way. Tornado is northwest of north northwest, moving no south southeast. This tornado appears to be about an eighth of a mile north of us now, moving south-southeast. Is intensifying.
totally incredible. We have a tornado right outside the window here. Tornado is only about a hundred yards away. Hey Mike, smile! <laughs> Tornado is now in the wheat field, going southeast to our southeast. The puzzle of trying to actually measure a person's risk from tornadoes may be one of the problems just too complex to ever solve. This complex interaction of people and tornadoes makes some of the most fundamental questions unanswerable. For instance, which state has the greatest risk from tornadoes? Is the greatest risk in Texas, where more tornadoes are counted than any other state? is the greatest risk in Florida, where more tornadoes per square mile are counted than in any other state. Or is it in Oklahoma, which has the greatest concentration of tornadoes that level houses to the ground? Tornado risk near the Mississippi River with, for instance, the tornado risk in the Texas Panhandle. Safety factors, such as visibility, differ so much from region to region that there may be no way to compare them. Here in Louisiana, visibility is rarely as good as it is in the Panhandle. Closest one we've ever seen. Years ago in Oklahoma, like that. First time I've seen them up here this close to Canadian, though, really. I've right. seen them down on the river. They'll follow a river or a creek. I don't know why, but they do. I just seen them go on north. I do too. That is a big sucker. Well, look at the parlin action. Look at that whip, that sucker. Look at the dart in that thing. Well, I'm glad. You bet you. Fellas, I'm going to be on TV. While solutions to the puzzles of tornado risk are unlikely, 
insights are possible. It was in 1970 that efforts to classify tornadoes and better understand the tornado hazard began to make genuine progress. After studying the deaths and damage at Lubbock, Texas, Professor Fujita of the University of Chicago introduced the concept called the Fujita Scale of Tornado Intensity. Since 1971, every officially documented tornado has been given a Fujita Scale rating from 0 to 5. The F-scale ratings are not based on the appearance of the tornado itself, no matter how spectacular. But the rating is based on the intensity of the damage inflicted by the tornado. The F-scale rating is not based on the total dollar damage during the tornado, but is based on the single most intense example of damage that was inflicted along the tornado's path. Finding that single most intense example is not always easy amidst the rubble of an entire community. Professor Fujita also calculated a range of wind speed values for each category. These are the estimated wind speeds needed to produce the six levels of damage. More than half of all tornadoes are in the F0 and F1 categories and are called weak tornadoes. A tornado that does no damage or dips down briefly and breaks a few tree branches is rated at F0. A tornado which damages the siding and partially unroofs a frame home would be rated at F1. Mobile homes that are flipped over and destroyed by a tornado are usually considered as examples of F1 damage. F1 tornadoes can be very dangerous. These have caused deaths under falling chimneys, under falling trees, and especially in overturned trailers. As long as the tornado did not intensify, the greatest danger at this Minnesota lake was probably from falling trees at the lakefront cottage. Getting into a closet might have been the safest thing to do. So, you can see it. It is totally incredible. This is so sweet. Let's see if I get a little more. It's coming up behind it. Destruction of rural outbuildings is generally considered as F1 damage, although F2 ratings are awarded when a well-built barn is destroyed. The type of tornado called a land spout may seem at times like an overgrown F1 dust devil, but they have produced near F3 damage in Denver, Colorado, and should be considered as dangerous. If the tornado, at its worst, rips the roof from a home or other frame building, all weaker damage is ignored and the tornado is rated at F2. If a tornado was on the ground for 40 miles and unroofed only a single home, the entire 40-mile track is given an F2 rating. For mobile homes, the transition from F1 damage to F2 damage has not and probably never can be defined. Some meteorologists consider the complete devastation of a mobile home to be an example of F2 damage. Others always rate mobile home damage at F1. There is no well-defined standard.
A tornado with winds that can rip the roof from a frame home will completely disintegrate a mobile home. Tornadoes stronger than F2 will leave a mobile home park unrecognizable. If a tornado rips away the roof and exterior walls of just one well-constructed home, all lesser damage is ignored and the tornado is rated at F3. F3 tornadoes can also throw vehicles long distances but there is no agreed upon standard that numerically links the distance traveled with the estimated wind speed. If at least one well-constructed home is left as a massive debris without any standing walls, then all lesser damage is ignored and the tornado is rated at F4. If at least one well-constructed home is completely swept away, leaving a bare foundation, then the highest rating, F5, would be applied. Since both the F4 and F5 ratings involve homes that no longer exist, choosing whether an F4 or F5 rating is appropriate is very difficult. Tree damage presents a unique challenge to the F-scale rating system. Each tornado and each tree species are unique. Even adjacent trees grow in a slightly unique environment. There is no defined standard for rating tree damage, only subjective judgments in individual cases. We know that straight winds in the F1 range can devastate an entire forest. We know that F1 winds can uproot large trees. Yet some trees remain standing, stripped of bark and branches, even in F4 winds. Since more trees than buildings are hit by tornadoes each year, an F-scale standard for tree damage might be a very useful tool if one is ever developed. There are many other types of damage in which an F-scale rating is applied only on the basis of a subjective judgment or a detailed engineering study. There are no standards for such things as damage to schools, churches, multi-story apartment buildings, and electrical transmission towers. There is no F-scale standard for the destruction of large downtown brick buildings which collapse rather than get blown away. Trying to use the Fujita scale to rate historically important tornadoes is difficult especially when the tornadoes hit in a downtown area. 203 people died here at Gainesville, Georgia in 1936. Most of the deaths occurred downtown where large brick buildings collapsed. There are other limitations to the rating of tornadoes using the Fujita scale. The Seymour, Texas tornado in 1979 is an ideal example of one of them. This tornado, like many on the Western Plains, did not strike anything that revealed the true force of its winds. Because it hit almost nothing, its destructive potential is underrated. 
the Seymour tornado may very well have leveled homes to the ground had it passed through a town. But it struck only trees and telephone poles, which is minimal F2 at best. This F1 tornado near Warren, Montana, may have been in a similar category. To overcome the tendency to underrate tornadoes on the Great Plains, it has been suggested that tornadoes be given a rating based on their appearance rather than their actual damage. However, this would be very difficult to do with any consistency. And consistency is all important if the ratings are to be of any scientific use. Perhaps a tornado should have two ratings, one for the actual damage and a second rating based on appearance. We better be ready to get to the basement. No, well, this one ain't going down. Training a nation of spotters to make visual estimates would be very difficult. Here, a massive, violent tornado near North Platte, Nebraska, has no condensation funnel. Here, what appears to be a rather weak tornado has multiple vortices. It's a little tornado. Like it's going back that way. The thin rope stage of a tornado may be capable of only F1 damage. Look at that tornado. Or may, as at Union City, be capable of destroying a home. The debris from the home can be seen in the air near the rope funnel. Other tornadoes are completely hidden behind dust. It may be impossible to train someone to make visual judgments without years of chasing and surveying experience. Subjective judgment will always be needed in the F-scale rating system, and there will always be disagreements. Homes were leveled at Dallas, but they were not frame homes and not well attached to a foundation. Buildings were swept away here in Georgia, but they were not well constructed homes. And there are still other complications. All of these tornadoes near Ash Valley and Great Bend, Kansas, were rated at F0 or F1. They may have all deserved those ratings, but we know through photogrammetry that hundreds of feet above ground level, this tornado is rotating at over 158 miles per hour. However, that doesn't mean it should be rated at F3. The F scale is a human risk analysis tool and therefore applies only where people operate just above ground level. In recent years, Professor Bluestein and his portable Doppler radar have added a new complexity to the Fujita scale rating system. This tornado near Moreland, Oklahoma, did minimal F3 damage, but portable Doppler radar detected winds in the F4 range, somewhere in the funnel the tornado would deserve an F4 rating if we could be sure those winds were near ground level. Despite its drawbacks and weaknesses, the Fujita scale has been among the most useful conceptual tools ever created for the study of severe storms. It has revolutionized tornado climatology 
and there seems to be no alternative. The inability to perfect a rating system for tornado damage and wind speeds may forever prevent us from solving the puzzle of tornado risk. The Vegeta scale was a product of one of the most productive meteorological minds of the 20th century, that of Professor Ted Vegeta. He has spent 50 years teaching and searching for insight into the great mysteries of severe storms. His talent for recreating the big picture from small clues goes back to the devastated cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He was part of a scientific survey team, and his analysis of the shadows burned in by the atomic fireball told the story of the exact blast height and position of the explosions. Some of his colleagues suffered severe illnesses after the survey. Spectacular graphics have always been a hallmark of his presentations. A bewildering array of experimental graphics on the Fargo tornado was the beginning of a 35-year career of pioneering photography. Here, the Parker tornado is held steady for easier study while the edge of the movie frame is allowed to move freely. His focus has always been on placing each problem, each concept, each vortex, into a broader perspective. His universal scheme ranges from the 10,000 mile wide vortices on the planet Jupiter down to 1,000 mile wide vortices on our planet. When the first weather satellites sent back crude pictures, he was among the first to link satellite photographs with severe storm outbreaks. His research continued down to the 10-mile-wide vortex that produced the first recognized tornadic hook echo in 1953. And further down to quarter-mile-wide tornadoes. He revealed vertical wind speeds of 135 miles per hour as this tornado crossed the Ohio River near Cincinnati. Vortex research continued down to include dust devils in its search for clues to multiple vortex structures. eventually down to the multiple vortices themselves at Xenia, Ohio. And finally, down to the tiny model vortices in a laboratory. That tornado model was eventually converted into a mechanism to study what may have been his most life-saving achievement. It was modified to the study of microbursts. Downbursts and microbursts are created when dry air causes precipitation to evaporate, cooling the air and causing it to sink at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. The air may hit the ground and spread out, causing damage of such severity that people report tornadoes in progress. Straight line, non-tornadic winds have been given many names over the centuries. Thunder gusts, derechos, hurricanes of the prairie. 
This Canadian windstorm is a very large-scale non-tornadic event, and its exact nature is not clearly understood. It damaged or destroyed millions of trees on over 300,000 acres of forest, about 100 miles north of the Minnesota border. Just outflow. Tremendous. That's still incredible to look at. One of Professor Fujita's most important career accomplishments was to identify microbursts as a unique small-scale phenomenon. While quite beautiful on the prairie, they can be very dangerous at airports. Microburst wind shear detectors are in place to watch for this previously unidentified hazard. Pursuit of mesocyclones, downbursts, and tornadoes has taken Professor Fujita far above ground level. For 12 years, he studied the tops of tornado-producing thunderstorms, searching for clues that might link tornado forecasting with satellite photography. He found overshooting tops that lasted only a few minutes and created time-lapse film of collapsing cloud tops that occurred directly above violent tornadoes. This is a difficult project, for tornadic thunderstorms can be twice the height of Mount Everest. part of his career, he has turned his attention to hurricanes and typhoons. For instance, this pulsating roof in Hawaii during Typhoon Aniki provided an opportunity to study high-frequency wind gusts. He also introduced a new concept, suggesting that wind shear zones within the eye wall of a hurricane produce a previously unidentified vortex. He called this vortex a mini-swirl and suggested that it was responsible for swaths of particularly intense damage. This video sequence from Typhoon Aniki may or may not be related to a mini-swirl, but he did find mini-swirl evidence in the Aniki damage patterns. Professor Fujita continues to work on tornado risk. In semi-retirement, he travels and continually challenges his colleagues. Interestingly enough, car was moving right above the ground maybe one foot above the ground, but it did not even leave a tire track. You have to have a vertical motion to do that. And then here, you see, it did, I think, here. And it go around here. I'm almost certain that because I could see no car in here. And the fact that you see here is that car was moving right, you know, maybe one or two feet above the already blown down car. What can make the car to float one foot above the ground and travel around the tornado center? You see, here, tornado core center over here. Next slide. Beautiful eye. You call it tornado? This is a vortex, <laughs> right beneath the wall cloud or hook echo circulation. What you call this? I'll call this eye. The core, this end of the core is here. That other end is over here, became large. And you see eye here, right at the center. This is the first time I've ever seen the center of a circulation and the, 
this is the tornado circulation. On top of it, you have mesocyclone. These three came straight down. This is a very rare case. I never seen anything like that. Of course, after the tornado, when you interview local people, I never seen anything like that. But I'm telling you, I haven't seen anything like this. <laughs> after serving quite a number of tornadoes, then actually, <laughs> that's my statement. See, center of circulation, giga circulation, the tornado this big. And then we have a little cyclone on top of it. I like it. That's why. This magnificent puzzle yields a few clues every year. But every year, those clues make us realize that the puzzle is even more complex than we had previously thought. The risk to a person's life from tornadoes simply can't be quantified. It changes unpredictably every year. Simply seeing the video of a minivan caught in a minimal F2 tornado may make people more cautious about using a car. Either that or he's a kamikaze pilot. Or they may become more at risk with an increased desire to see and photograph a tornado. Piecing together all the factors that might allow us to quantify tornado risk, place a number on it, may be a classic, unsolvable puzzle. Hey, 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 we got a, we got a yeah. tornado back here, tornado. Oh, man. Get it, get it. You see it? Yeah. Let's get out of this rain. Or is that smoke? What is it? I think it's a debris cloud. I do too, Jim. On the ground east of Goodibo, five That's miles it. east of Goodibo, That's moving it. east northeast. Again, a tornado has Three been clouds. spotted by weather spotters east of Goodibo, five miles east of Goodibo, moving east northeast. For those that are in that Big area, the oh, God, we got a perfect. Can you also, see it in the middle? Mm -hmm. Line of thunderstorms still to the west of Super. As heavy God, rain is indicated uh, north of uh, Granite, and uh, there is an indication of a possibility of a funnel cloud in that area. So. AQ 106 will keep you posted. We are under a tornado warning in effect at 745 this evening for Northeast Iowa County for our primary AQ 106 listening area. A tornado warning in effect at 745. There is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect at 740 for AQ 106 listening area. It includes uh, Rear and Custer and Blaine and Iowa counties and Northwest Shadow County. Again, the confirmed sighting of a tornado five miles east of Gertieville, and a so this is it. This is great. We're getting on the radio in the speed of rotation. It's slow, but it's still rotating. You can yeah. see where it's connecting the base. Yeah. Uh, March three clouds. This first appendix follows, chronologically, two tornado chasers in the Oklahoma panhandle on May 5, 1993. John Davies describes the supercell as he moves south out of Kansas. Dave Keller describes the storm as he moves to the north from Texas. The two chasers eventually meet. The producer is indebted to them for the use of their video and for their distinctly contrasting styles. That's looking straight up. I'm straight up. Okay, looking to the east up the road, to the east, straight up, bulgy stuff, out of the anvil, look at this anvil. A uh, little notch, RFD notch in the left hand side there. Yeah, storm structure looking better, mustache like, here we got to look at it, for all you meteorologists in the crowd. Big mustache shape going up the core off to the uh, back south side, back to the action front center. Attempting to center properly. Well, we have a teeny weeny tornado if you go by that thing of dust in the ground. What I claim to have seen. <laughs> no, 
I don't know what's back here. This could be a second uh, spin-up mezzo back to the southwest of the first, the main one back here. Can't keep my eye on it much, and I don't know if the camera has a better view of it or what. There, over the um, irrigation stuff. Yeah, I can't see it at all. Hey, there it is. There it goes. A couple little vortices. Oh, three, three vortices. turn stop and get some uh, steady pictures okay looking south west from a point that's probably somewhere about 15 to 20 miles east of Guymon Oklahoma a large tornado on the ground looks like an HP supercell with a lot of the rain wrapping around the tornado you can see the uh, land shape on the southeast side of the storm where the inflow is coming in the tornado is in the lower right hand corner and also in the rain you can see the flange on the uh, right hand side there just uh, just to the right of the tornado and then rain coming down along the edge of the flange and then to the northeast up to where my location is and north of me can't really see the tornado anymore for the rain don't know if it's still there or not that's one reason HP storms are so dangerous, is the rain can really hide the tornado. Could be the tornado's getting up to its mature stage, so it's wrapping more rain around the mesocyclone. I decided to stick it out at this location because in watching the uh, clouds move and the rain band and the tornado that I can't really see in there, I can tell that it's moving from left to right, so it would probably pass to my north, so I think I'm okay. The hail never did really cut loose other than a few pieces of golf ball size fell out in the field here in front of me. Now I want you to notice that uh, on the uh, right, I'm sorry, the left side of the rain shaft in there, there's another lowering developing. I don't know if that's another tornado trying to develop or what. But you can see this thing is really rotating. Look at the striations and the flanged base on the east and southeast side with the, the inflow coming into it. Very pretty to look at, but a very dangerous storm. I think I'm going to stay right about where I'm at and see what happens. The storm should pass just to my north. If it looks otherwise, I will retreat back to the south. Just beautiful storm from a visual perspective. I really question whether there's a tornado in there right now, but still, you can see, look, look at the inflow. It's really picked up there. At least there's a, quite a beaver tail. It wasn't there just a minute ago, and that's going right into that. And so that's definitely rotating, so I better not say that there's not a tornado in there. There very definitely could be. So that's your mesocyclone. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Sure looks like a funnel to me. Look at the ground. This would, of course, be the second tornado of the day, or the third, actually. 50% <laughs> rule. Panning over to this uh, other updraft area. Yeah, it's not rotating. It's not a tornado. It's not a funnel. That is a funnel. Starting to get a beaver tail from the northeast now, looking northwest, it kind of comes into the storm. The storm's losing a little bit of its flange shape, but you can see there's quite an inflow from the due east also going, it looks like, to kind of that point right in there, where there's a hint of a lowering. So probably should keep an eye on it because we may get something else to spin up in there. Again, there's the beaver tail from the northeast. I'm looking northwest. Kind of points into the middle there. And then here's some inflow coming from the due east or slightly east southeast going right into that center section. This is really juicy coming in here and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's all rotating into there, so we got a tornado forming. Looks like it's trying to.
Here's the beaver tail going into it with kind of a flange shape to it. Looks like it's going to try to do it again here. What this would be would be probably a new mesocyclone or mesocyclone core that has formed to the east-southeast of where the old one was back in the rain way off to the northwest at this point. It looks like we got a tornado. Can't tell if there's circulation on the ground or not. Thing is, it doesn't look like there's a good rear flank downdraft to help it at this point, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's go in close on it. I can hear some chasers somewhere off to my south yelling it's on the ground. It's almost like the tornado's fighting outflow that's pushing it back to the south or something. Like I said, it seems to be having trouble getting going because there's not a good roof line down draft in there. Got another supercell developing way off to the southwest there, potentially. So we may be here a good bit of the evening, who knows. Let me show you the north flank of this puppy. Awesome. Almost as smooth as you could ever want it. Mm. Not a good view, sorry. What a beaut. It's done this in about two minutes. We'll zoom out all the way. Zoom in a little bit. Put some uh, datage. This is John Davies. Looks like it's moving due north. Unusual to see wedges out here moving north due north. Just met Dave Keller. Back there's Dave now. As the tumbleweed blows the away, we can see the now. inflow. The tumbleweed tracers, right? This seems to be out in open country, so I, I hope it's not doing damage to too much property or hurting anybody. Looking northwest now, big tornado still on the ground. Moving due north. Starting to wrap up in rain again. You can see the north side, but not the south side. Looks like a rain curtain coming around from the south. Big inflow. You can see a hint of a rear flank downdraft right behind it there. An hour, two minutes later. Says it all. I'm gonna zoom and I'm uh, doing other stuff. Do da do da. It goes all the way around it from there to there. Cool. Oh, view the storm. Frisbee stacks here. Holy cow, this is fantabulous up here. Look at this structure out of the flank, out of the, into the anvil. It's great. Here's our friendly tornado. Wonder what this car is gonna do. Here is, oh, stripes galore, I hope you can see that. Stripes around the northeast flank of it. Stripes, 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 four, five, six stripes.
Texas chasers inflow to the north. Here's a mid-level shell that's directly to the west. Almost overhead the uh, flank. Oh, look at way up there, way up there, right under the anvil corkscrew into it. Incredible. to the right, this uh, leading edge of the wall cloud hanging down. Is it going to do another tornado? Guess what? Huguenson's four miles away. Might be time since this is appears to be roping out and making a big dust swirl to try and get ahead of it. Let's go power off. That low hanging scud that I talked to you about earlier is more than that. It is the most beautiful swirl with a very nice tornado in the Time is 8.30, I'm at mile 401.2, somewhere around 3 mile east road, 3 miles south and east of Bugleton. Cars stuff, what I want to look at. I don't know what I've got here, I'm sorry. I can turn the gain up too, that'd be cool. It's a nice tornado. It's kind of fat, chunky. Whitish, the big collar around it. There, they're fly, flashering up ahead. Two vehicles, there's a trailer thing, and uh, yeah, yeah, a guy behind me wants to get ahead. Don't know how much battery I have left, but here's the old tornado roping out, and here's a new one forming right there. It's still on the ground. If you look closely, it's in there. On the right side is the rope. And then there's a new mesocyclone core forming to the north, northwest of the other tornado. Thought we were going to have a merger there for a moment. But instead, there's, there's the newly forming tornado. Very hard to see. It's getting dark. The other tornado, I think, is gone. But we just saw a hand off to a new tornado. And the new tornado actually formed in the northwest, north-northwest of the old tornado as it roped out. My camera's giving me some funny things here. It says battery and then it'll quit saying it, so I don't know how j much juice I have left. But we have a very interesting storm here, obviously. Still have very large tornado on the ground. It's getting dark. Tornado is going to pass east of Huguet, and I'm looking to the northwest. This is a fascinating storm. If you look in here, here's your rear flank downdraft. There's the battery flashing at me again. There's your rear flank downdraft, and it's all rain. It's wet. There's no clear areas in it. It's it's wet. There's been some lightning in there. There's the tornado. Got quite an entourage following this. Starting to get the old battery flash again here, son. Huge tornado still on the ground. It's going to move just east of Huguenin. Again, my camera, I can't figure out whether it's got juice or not, so I'm just going to. Yeah, I am concerned. It seems to be on the map moving pretty much toward Moscow, Kansas. I sure hope it doesn't do anything. This thing's a very large tornado. It could be, I'm sure it's probably at least F3, and it could even be a violent intensity.
Breaking swiftly, passing in only seconds, the tornado leaves behind it a path of incredible destruction and all too often death. One of the most violent acts of nature, it is a major concern of the Weather Bureau, part of ESSA, the Environmental Science Services Administration. These are the danger signs, for the violent turbulence of the thunderstorm is the spawning ground of tornadoes. There is little that can be done today to lessen their destructive force but much is being done to predict and warn of their approach. In open countryside, the degree of danger from tornadoes is less. Homes are widely distributed. But as we become more and more an urbanized society, the odds are greater for tornadoes touching down in populated areas and inflicting heavy damage on people and property. At the same time, those of us who live in and around our towns and cities often do not have unobstructed views of the horizon. We are hemmed in. We are crowded together. We cannot see or hear a tornado coming. For that reason, we are more dependent on a warning system that alerts us when tornadoes approach, tells us how to minimize damage to our property, and reduce the risk of injury or even death. Part of that system is the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City, Missouri, the focal point for ESSA's nationwide severe storm warning network. In a given year, more than 600 tornadoes can be expected to touch down in the United States, any place, at any time, day or night. It's the job of the severe storms forecasters in Kansas City to keep on the lookout for that special combination of weather conditions known to cause severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. Around the clock, the watch is kept. Weather information is received from all parts of the country. Temperature, pressure, humidity, wind. The data fed into computers and digested. Reappear, printed on maps of the United States. Not just one type of map, but five. Representing five elevations up to 40,000 feet. Thus, the severe storm forecaster has a three-dimensional view of the flow of forces that make up our weather. Each morning, the night shift forecaster briefs the day man on the outlook for the next 24 hours. Late reports projected to this map show thunderstorm activity is expected on a line across the southern central United States, and there is a good chance some of the storms can be severe. A low-pressure system moving eastward is drawing in a tongue of warm, exceptionally moist surface air from the Gulf of Mexico, with low-level, very dry, hot air from the southwest and cold, dry surface air from the north, all on a collision course. When these out-of-balance air masses meet, the reaction will be violent. How violent? It is this forecaster's job to find out. As the morning progresses, he orders additional upper air temperature soundings. Sharp temperature drops above the warm, moist surface air can indicate the formation of a very severe storm. Later in the morning, the information arrives back at the forecast center. Above the huge air mass, the temperature drop is considerable. Local reports show a line of growing cumulus clouds. Radar scopes are beginning to pick them up. A severe storm is in the making. And now a new danger must be considered. 11.20. An urgent request is made for high-altitude jet aircraft in-flight reports of winds along the jet stream. Reports through the FAA air route traffic control system show 150 knot headwinds at 37,000 feet ahead of the storm's path. The stage is set. The hot, dry air mass meets the moist gulf air. A squall line forms. Turbulence grows as the cold front moves in. As these storms move into the influence of the strong jet aloft, they can become more intense. These are the ingredients needed to trigger tornadoes. 
The forecaster estimates that in about three hours, a line of towering thunderstorms will converge on this area. Some will be of tornado intensity. A final check of his data, then he moves into action. A tornado watch is transmitted to alert all points in the threatened area. Many miles away in this unsuspecting community, there is no thought that trouble might be brewing beyond the horizon. The storm clouds are still far away, and life goes on as usual. Everything is normal, except at the local weather bureau office. There, the word has been received. There is a possibility of tornadoes in the area later in the day, 12.13. The meteorologist in charge sets into action a pre-arranged emergency watch. Public officials are contacted, law enforcement agencies, emergency and civil defense forces, newspapers, radio and television stations. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special tornado bulletin from the Weather Bureau. Severe thunderstorms and possibly tornadoes may be expected in the city and all of Carson County this afternoon between the hours of 2 and 6. A tornado watch is now in effect. We repeat, a tornado watch. A tornado watch is no cause for immediate alarm. Overhead, the sky may still be blue. The watch is issued to alert you to the possibility of tornadoes and let you begin taking precautions to protect yourself and your property if and when a tornado is actually spotted moving toward you. Only if a tornado is sighted will a tornado warning be sounded. This will be the signal to take cover. These familiar things can become deadly missiles in tornado winds. Small portable items should be moved indoors. Flying debris is a major cause of injuries and deaths in tornadoes. One twenty-seven. In the surrounding countryside, volunteer observers are standing by, filling station operators, farmers, policemen, people who normally work out of doors. Their job, scan the horizon, look for a funnel cloud, report it immediately to the weather bureau or police. At the bureau office, radar probes the distant skies, giving a picture of the approaching storm. One forty-five p.m. The tornado watch goes on. In the community, people are alert, but normal activity continues. Now the squall line is visible on the horizon. The volunteer observers watch it move in. They are the eyes for the whole community. 306. The storm is closing fast. Hailstones an ominous sign of extreme cloud turbulence. Then, the radar picks up a suspicious echo. It could mean tornado. The funnel cloud is spotted. Tornado confirmed. The Weather Bureau is notified. The warning goes out.
Those of you living in trailers should take cover in a nearby reinforced building or below ground level. A storm cellar, if available, is the best possible shelter. Anyone in an automobile in the path of the funnel should leave the car and get into a ditch or ravine. If you are caught in the open, lie flat and cover exposed portions of the head and body. Make as small a target as possible. We repeat, take shelter immediately. The funnel is now reported... Everything was just green, and it was just an awful rumble and rumble. The whole house just collapsed down around. After that, I just dove under the desk up there, and uh, it hit. Ceiling went off. And a minute, two minutes later, everything was over. I ran out. And then when I got up, I was ringing west, and my hair was so full, and my mouth was so full, and my eyes were so full of insulation. And I looked at my husband and I said, we're alive. The tornado has passed. Capricious, swift, savage. For the indifferent or the skeptical, the penalties can well be tragic. Survival depends on heeding the warnings, knowing what to do and having the time to do it. The tornado watch gives time to plan. The warning, time to act. And planned action can keep the toll in dead and injured to a minimum. At NOAA, the vigil goes on. Skilled men use every means at their command to give you the precious gift of time. Searching for danger signs beyond the horizon in a constant effort to guard you against the gathering storm. Ha <laughs> ha! 